there's a very specific um, set of um, nuclei that emit gamma radiation that are un unstable, um, but you know, atoms, um, nuclei are typically, you know, X-ray emitters as well, and so on. It, it, it's just the statement in the papers basically is, is just that it falls in the right region to, you know, to, um, to be co consistent with what we measure. Uh, it's not completely outside what we measure, meaning the result of, of calculating the angular momentum of the proton rotation and first of all, the interaction time, meaning that when we calculate how fast it's spinning, we end up with very, 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 very close to C, and um, and the angular the, at that speed of rotation, uh, the um, the period of that speed of rotation is ten to minus twenty three or something like that, which is the uh, correct value for the interaction time. Um, that is the the how fast the strong force grabs onto stuff that are flying by. Um, and um, and that you know is consistent with what we measure, and that you know that rate of rotation uh, in frequency is equivalent to wh what is consistent that we measure with uh, you know around you know uh, nuclei. Uh, so so this is what the statement is meaning to say, um, but basically. Um, it's a statement basically that, that uh, says, you know, the equation gives the right values for these things, precisely in the case of the interaction time and precisely in, case, in the case of the strong force. And it produces an uh, angular velocity or a, a, a frequency of rotation that's consistent with what we measure around nuclei in general. It's a looser statement. But it's very significant. It's it's looser, but it's still very significant. Um, and it's significant actually that atoms are producing this kind of energy levels, um, like X-ray emission and so on. And they, first of all, that's consistent with what we see black holes emitting in the universe. Um, so that should have been a clue. Um, let me just put a little parenthesis there. It's consistent as well with what we measure coming off sunspot on our on our local black hole that we call the sun. And you know, this is a pet P that I will resolve with the mainstream community. Eventually they will understand that stars are black holes, that the core of stars are black holes. Um, I mean it's very, very straightforward. It's significantly obvious when you look at the evidence. Um, and um, it will come to be that we will understand just as we understood, which was unconceivable when I started to present in physics conference that, that the center of galaxies would be black holes. That, that was inconceivable. Uh, never mind that now I've shown very clearly that the center of atoms are mini black holes um, eventually will come to pass that they will realize that when a star explodes and they see a black hole afterwards it's not because the black hole was produced in the explosion which doesn't add up if you do the math like you can't produce enough compressive power in an explosion to make a black hole that way um, but that the black hole was always there because it's the core of the star, it's the source of the star, uh, it's the source of mass, actually. So uh, without one of those, nothing happens. Um, and it's at the center of all things. So uh, because the universe is warped uh, into singularity in every Planck point. Um, and so it uh, singularity is is uh, is uh, fundamental to all of existence. Uh, there's actually nothing that exists outside singularity.
which means that we're unified, by the way. Because the word singularity is um, sing, <laughs> singular. Um, now, yeah, this is another clue. You would think that uh, if you, let me say it in a technical world, and then I'm going to say it in a simpler word, uh, but um, think of a black hole. Technically, it curves space-time into an infinite point at its center called singularity. If you were to find a place in the universe where you're not part of that curvature after you found a singularity, you could only conclude that the universe is singular. Um, that is, um, if you found a black hole, if you think black holes don't exist, that's one thing. But then if you find one, then that means that somewhere along that curvature, which goes to infinity, so it'd be infinite in all directions, somewhere along that path, you would be sitting on that curvature. And so nothing could escape that curvature anywhere, any place. And so all would be part of one thing, which is that singularity. Um, it, the word even tells you it's so. Um, so if you found one black hole, which is called a singularity, you would know the universe is singular. Now, it's taking a little time for them to have, you know, realized this, but it's coming along. You know, there's more and more physicists that are starting to realize that uh, black holes are most likely connected through wormholes and that um, that makes the structure of space and that subatomic particles are mini black holes connected through wormholes, which entangles them, and that the whole thing is a huge network, you know, uh, space-time network um, of wormholes and black holes. So it, it's on its way.